Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. And this is NFL Gambling Picks for week number 11. I am not doing so hot. Chris, however, is doing just fine. I went 2-2-1. Two, two yeah, you did. Well, I went 2-2-1 two, two and one as well, but overall... You're doing better than I am. Okay. You are doing better than I am. I don't know what my overall record is. Well, let's uh let's go ahead and talk about that. We both went two two and one last week. I lost thirty four dollars and nine cents. You lost thirteen dollars and sixty four cents. I am twenty two and twenty nine on the season. I have lost eleven point nine five units. You are twenty four and twenty four. Oh, I'm dead even. And you are up three point seven seven units. Right. So you are still awesome. making money on the season. John Carlson did really well last last week. Seven and three, hit the tiebreaker, and won whatever the Tunica Prize was last week. So congratulations, John Carlson. You, the SU who are watching or listening to this, can also win this week. We do a weekly pick'em contest over on the website, winningcureseverything.com. Go over there, click on football picks contest, do it every week. You go in, enter your name, enter your email. We pick 10 games against the spread, seven college, three NFL. Now, once we get into just NFL towards the end of the season, it'll only be NFL. But it'll be 10 games every week, and you're just picking against the spread. It's multiple choice. You get in the opening line. So some of you will get a lot of value in this. Now, we're not betting for money. You're, you're betting to win prizes. So either way, yeah, that is free. You're not betting anything. You you're got just, that right. You're it's free. taking two minutes out of your day. You're playing a little contest with us. You got that right. So it is uh, It is free to enter. So go check it out over at winningcureseverything.com. Over on the website, you can also get our social media platforms. You can find our videos, our podcasts, our picks, our previews, everything else. Anything about us, you can find over at winningcureseverything.com. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you share the show out. Click the like button because that always helps, right? Always yes, helps. Click does. like for us. We do appreciate those, and the contest, the show, everything is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six wonderful sports books. You can go find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Let's go ahead and jump into this thing. I got five. You got four Four this week. All right, I'll start us off then. Come on. I'm going to start us on Thursday. All right. The Pittsburgh Steelers are traveling to the Cleveland Browns. And I'm still betting against the Browns. This Steelers defense is legit right now. They are, they look fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And as good as that Steelers defense is at taking the ball away, the Browns are just as good at giving it away. That seems like it sets up really well for the Steelers to be able to cover plus three here. The Browns are favored at home. I understand they're at home. It's a divisional game. All that kind of mess. I understand the Browns got firepower. They got talent. But this Steelers defense is no joke, and they are playing with some intensity right now. I love the Steelers plus three. Give me that for $100 this week. Okay. All right. All right. There's nobody in football that I trust more than William Belichick. He's got two weeks to prepare. He's coming off a bye week. This is true. And he just took a loss. And I think that's exactly what he wanted to happen before his bye week. So he could get in those guys' butts. Rarely does he ever lose two games in a row. Happened last year. First time it's happened in a long time. And uh, they also get the luxury of going to Philadelphia. And this is a team that took a Super Bowl <laughs> for him. And if you think he doesn't take that personal, he's not happy about it at all. Now, in that game, Against Philadelphia in that Super Bowl. Defense did not look good at all. Philly scored on every drive but one. I'm going to bet that Bill is going to make sure that doesn't happen. This will be the best the defense has looked all year. And they're minus three and a half. And I'm taking, I'm, I'm laying the three and a half. And, and I think they're going to beat them. I think they're going to beat them up. I think they're going to come off fired up. Philly's defense hasn't looked great. So I look True. for Tom to have a decent game. Now, I don't know what the wide receiving core is going to look like. I mean, we just 
We'll just see. Kind of just dudes. But but they're going to run the ball well, and 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 I just everything about it says Bill handles these games. All right, what uh what dollar figure are you putting on this one? Give me a hundred bucks on it. Hundred bucks, and these are all minus one ten, right? Yep. All, right. all the NFL lines right now are minus one ten. I don't think anybody's screwing. Sounds good to me. Game number two for me is the Saints at the Bucks. The New Orleans Saints got their rear ends handed to them last week by the Atlanta Falcons. Lost a rivalry game, lost a division game, and got smoked at home. At home. It, you, you might think, man, maybe, maybe they're just kind of losing some of that luster. I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm getting them at Tampa Bay less than a touchdown. Saints minus five and a half here. I think Drew Brees and them come out guns a-blazing. And I also believe that Jameis still likes to turn the football over. The Saints don't turn the football over. I think that sets up well here. Atlanta sacked Drew Brees like ten times last week, okay? I don't think that's happening this week. This defense for Tampa Bay is not doing that. Nope. I agree. I am going to put 150 bucks. On the nope. Saints at minus five and a half. All right. Next game up for you. So the Rams looked like crap last week. Yep. Yep. Went to uh, Pittsburgh and got uh, got run Rams up. Rams lost two more. Now we talked about this a couple weeks ago when Se- Se- Seattle lost their center. Right? Yeah. I told you that's something that always worries me. The Rams lost their center a couple weeks ago. The Rams also lost two more offensive linemen. They have no depth at offensive. I think their line might be worse than Cleveland's right now. They have a really good front seven coming their way in the Chicago Bears. Bears fans will flock to Atlanta, or not to Atlanta, to L.A., and I think there will be no home field advantage for the Rams. And uh, you're getting plus six and a half. I think the Bears win this game outright. The Rams' defense doesn't look great. Mr. Trubisky kind of seemed to have some things going on right. Last week, offensively, I don't know that he has to be great because I think this defense is going to roar. I think they're going to scream. I like it. I think that offensive line has no chance, none whatsoever. I, I like your thinking here. So I, I like the Bears plus six and a half. I'm going to have a little sprinkled on the money line. What, uh, what's your dollar figure? Uh, this one's 75. 75. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Next game up for me, this is game number three. For me, I'm going to San Francisco, where the 49ers just lost their first ball game of the year. They got the Cardinals coming in. Now, just a couple weeks ago, the 49ers went to Arizona, and it was tight. It was a close game, 28-25. Cardinals scored late, made sure they got that cover. I don't think that's going to work this week. I think San Francisco comes out pissed off. I think that defense comes out fired up. I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong here, I don't think that Russell Wilson plays for the Cardinals. No, he does not. I'm I'm certain of that. So if he doesn't play for the Cardinals, I think this 49ers defense is going to sit on the Cardinals. I think they are going to dominate this football game. It's a big line. I understand that. And that's okay. Because I think they're going to destroy this football team. I give me the 49ers minus eleven and a half. I'm putting a hundred dollars on that one too. Wow. Yeah. Big I'm number. I'm feeling really good about uh, about these this week. Okay. Feeling really good. All right. There's a team I don't like, but I but I gotta bet them. <laughs> you, you don't got to. But. Dallas is going to Detroit this week. Okay. Okay. Matthew Stafford has broken bones in his back. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any way on earth they're letting him play this week. He fought to try to play last week. Said he felt fine. And it's not about how you feel, Matthew. It's about what the x-ray shows. Yeah. If you have broken bones in your back, you don't get to take the field. I don't think those are going to be healed by this week. I'm not a doctor. Eh, used no. to play one. And uh, Dallas is short line. That's two and a half. Two and a half. That's, that's at Detroit. That's at Detroit. That is... Give me Dallas minus two and a half, seventy five dollars. I just can't. I, I, Dallas is going to have a bounce back. Hey, bounce back week. They played fine. Yeah, they're not getting blown out by anybody. 
Detroit without Stafford is going to just be tough to beat. I mean, they're, they're just going to be tough to, to Well, it's tough game. to win. That's yeah, right. it's they're, tough to win. I just don't see it. They're such a different team. I don't think there's any way the doctors are going to let Stafford play. I think I think you're probably right. Probably right. Now, that, now I will tell you right now, I've looked. It's off the board in a lot of places because of that. And when I think – that is announced. That line is going to change drastically. I have no idea what, what it'll end up being. What it'll end up being, and we're doing this. But you can go on and get it Tuesday now. night, early Wednesday morning. Yep. But Depending on what book you are in, yeah. I, like, I got it. I got it two. I got it at two and a half now. Found it there. I'm, I'm riding with that. That sounds totally reasonable. Uh, next one up for me, game number four. I'm going to Baltimore. I don't trust Bill O'Brien. I don't trust that team right now. I don't know what it is. But Baltimore is on a mission. And you know me. I'm not a Ravens fan. I don't like this team. But the way that that, I mean, Greg Roman deserves a head coaching position. What he has done with that offense. Okay. You disagree. I do disagree. I think his offense is incredible. Just because you're a great OC doesn't mean you deserve a head coaching position. The only reason I say he deserves a head coaching position is because the reason we have they so are many bad giving him out coaches, like candy. You see, the reason we have so many bad coaches in the NFL is because we're just giving out jobs to guys who have one good year as an OC. Well, he ain't with a this dynamic is, player, by the way. This is not just a one year thing for Roman. Like Roman also was the offensive coordinator that made Colin Kaepernick look out of this world. A dynamic player. His head coach had a whole hell of a lot to do with that, by the way. And the other thing is those teams. Loaded. So when he gets the head coaching job in Cincinnati, call me and tell me if yeah. he deserves that job or not. Okay, I mean you got a point. You got a valid point. Because those are the jobs. Open Either up. way, Greg Roman has done a fantastic job with this offense, and I think that they continue to do fantastic things against this Texans defense. The Texans defense, it, that that's what they're known for, right? No. But they're yeah. not all. Have they're you not, watched the Texans this year. No, I understand the where you're coming terrible. from. I'm saying just the the. General consensus over the last few years but that's has been a defensive team. I understand. Damn, I'm trying to make a point here. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is Ravens minus Can't four. Do that. Ravens minus four. That's what I'm taking for a hundred dollars. I'm taking the Texans. They've had two weeks to get healthy. They get ready to prepare for this game. Deshaun Watson, and this is going to be a duel for the MVP. This is a big game. This is a big deal. Yeah. Lamar went to Seattle. He took on Russell Wilson. Beat hustle and bustle heads up. I think he can win this game, but I think it's going to be close. I think Deshaun Watson says, hey, I belong in this conversation too. I didn't mean to say $100. I'm putting 75 on it. Back it up. I'm, I'm backing it up. I'm okay, backing it up. Fine. I'm going to take 75 for mine. You're doing 75? Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you're doing the Texans. Give me the Texans plus four. Texans plus four. This is four. a numbers thing, man. I think this is going to be a pretty close game. I think it's going to come down to a field goal. I got four points to start the game. I think my team has just a chance, just as good a chance. Do I like uh, Bill O'Brien? No, but he hasn't been awful. He hasn't been terrible. And Deshaun Watson's a freak. I get the best player in the game outside of Des- – I get the two best players in the game outside of the best player. So, so you could have Lamar. Watson is probably this much under him, just a little bit under him, but then I get Hopkins. Okay. That's reasonable. I'm going to still roll with the, the Ravens. That's fine. Last game for me. Last game for us, right? You, you got one more? That was it. That's it. All right, last game. That was my four. I'm going to Minnesota. The Broncos quarterback situation. I I just, I don't even know what to say about it. I don't, I don't, and they hadn't looked terrible. But I think they will. Well, they played the Browns, which helped them look really good. Yeah. I think it will be a different story when they go to Minnesota. I agree with that. I think that the Vikings will be able to run the football on this defense. I think that Kirk Cousins will be able to throw the football on this defense. And, yes, it is a massive line. I understand that. Big numbers. I don't care. You and I have talked about this. It's, it, you may not agree with me this week. But at certain weeks this year, you have said they are they are making that was these lines terrible game. That was that was Dolphins early, and that was the Bengals, and that was the Redskins. I think the Vikings, that was the Jets, 
the the, the the Broncos aren't close to as bad as those four teams. Understandable. Aren't close. But the Vikings are fantastic at home. Okay. And when these lines are this big, it kind of makes you think, whoa, 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 whoa. Way too many points here. Yeah, I think a lot more people will be betting the dogs. And that's where they're going to get caught. I like the Vikings here to win by at least two touchdowns, if not more. Uh, Vikings minus 10 and a half. And I got $100 on that one. Big numbers. Massive numbers. And I don't care. We are going to roll this week. I'm feeling good about it. We're going to make some money this week. Every single week, we bring in TJ Reeves, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter and the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can get him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, your Buccaneers finally got your win, didn't they? Oh, it had been a while, sir. And it's good to be with you guys here on Winning Cures. And, and my Bucks concluded the odyssey of five different cities over six weeks playing road games and even a home away from home game in London. Came back home. We figured out where Raymond James Stadium was, got the directions on how to get there, how to get back in there and play, and battled the Arizona Cardinals and pulled out a, a victory. I got to see Kyler Murray firsthand at field level. Uh, exciting game. He's obviously got a lot of arm talent. He does not have a lot of size. It's obvious <laughs> that in the in the NFL, if he has big defensive and offensive linemen around him, he's not the same quarterback. You've got to move him around. You've got to give him a clean pocket or he's going to have trouble. Um, but, he look, he threw for 300 yards. He threw for three touchdowns. He had them in the lead. But uh, the Bucks found a way with a 92-yard drive at the end to get the win. So, yes, even though you cannot see me, a smile on my face <laughs> as the Bucks get a victory and now get ready to play the Saints. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little more about what happened with the Saints whenever you like, but that's, uh, that's now interesting uh, after what Atlanta did to them last week, guys. Well, let's, let's hold off on the Saints for a second. You have also got to be smiling a little bit because – if I remember correctly, you also had the Seahawks on Monday night, right? <laughs> and yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, they and, get the and big it was win. Not, and, it, and it was not looking good. Look, we were sizzling on Three Dog Thursday last week because on College Football Saturday, we came up with five successful underdogs. And, uh, and then uh, you actually, I think, had the push with the Buffalo Bills yep. against the Cleveland Browns. But I had another one of my prognosticators come through with the Cardinals, keeping it close with the Bucks, And then I had the Seahawks Monday night, and it was not looking good. When it was 10 nothing early, I was thinking that I was about to be looking uh, like a fool for taking Seattle. But that's why they play the last three quarters of the game. They turned up the defense, and I tried to testify – here at, at the altar of the Winning Cures Everything uh, broadcast that Russell Wilson firsthand watching him in Seattle against my Bucks the week before is something else. And they gave him enough chances, guys, and he pulled it out uh, there at the end, even after the interception. I mean, how about, how about the fourth quarter and the overtime of that game? Again, one twist, oh, one turn, one subplot after another. Great win for Seattle. First loss for the 49ers. Great game. Oh, it was, it was a – Fantastic game. Hey, Chris and I are in a uh, group chat or a group text, whatever, with uh, several of the guys from a Big Ten podcast. And mm -hmm. that was the exact quote. Like, what a game. Yeah, we need more of those. We need more. Like, I'll take more of those. So that was. Well, and, when, and, and, and I don't know about you, but I came out of my chair uh, late night when Russell Wilson threw the interception, first of all, which he'd only thrown two the entire season. I thought the 49ers defender was going to go all the way for the walk-off pick six to end the game. Uh, and then they stop him, and then they miss the field goal where <laughs> I don't know if Brother Giannini could have kicked it better than the rookie 49ers kicker that was trying. He missed everything. He missed the net. He kicked the ball in the little tunnel over on the sideline and almost hit a guy in the head missing the field goal in the OT to keep it alive and give Russell Wilson one more chance. Again, what a game. When, and what's so crazy is he hit the kick at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah, to, to end regulation. <laughs> like, that just, that. you know. They it, missed kickers. Bobby Gold bad. I mean. Kickers. They, they what are you going to do? What are you going to do with kickers? You got that right. Well, let's, let's, talk about, uh, let's talk about your Bucks again. Let's talk about New Orleans. It got absolutely drubbed by. Uh, wow. I mean, the, the biggest doggy of the weekend. The biggest underdog of the weekend 
Went into you their house. You are aware, not only a 13 and a half or 14 point underdog, depending on whatever you got the Falcons at if you took that game, but that is the first time since 2001 that a team that had lost six in a row or more beat a team that had won six in a row or more. How about that stat? In fact, it's only happened twice in the last 45 years of the NFL where a team had lost six in a row or more and they beat a team that had won six in a row or more. So that was completely out of nowhere. Kudos to the Falcons. I could see that being rare because think about it. Like there's not a lot of teams that are going to win six straight NFL games. And there aren't a lot of teams that are going to lose six straight. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. But still, it, it just shows you how uh, how Atlanta was lightly regarded, and you never know in the NFL. And they played four complete quarters on both sides of the ball. Oh, and just in time to wake the Saints up and get them angry, kicked off as they come to Tampa <laughs> to play my Buccaneers. But they are the road favorite there. That'll be an interesting game. We'll talk some about it on Three Dog Thursday with the Buccaneers getting points at home. Now, we joked earlier in the year – you said to me, Chris Giannini, after the Bucks won that Thursday night game in Charlotte and after they beat the Rams uh, in Los Angeles, you said, hey, I've got an attractive money line ticket on the Bucks to win the NFC South. Uh, now, the Bucks did go south with four straight losses, but, but dare I say, are we at one of those moments like they say at the racetrack, hold your tickets? There's an inquiry, hold your hold your NFC South <laughs> ticket there, my friend, if you still have it. Because if the Bucks beat the Saints this week, suddenly the division's not a foregone conclusion for the Saints. Am I right? You are correct. I'm going to hang on to the ticket. I'm not throwing it away right. yet. But when, when right. Teddy Two Gloves went, went uh, undefeated, it was it was one of those things where I felt like that was – that was the name. I agree with you. I agree with you. And hope. they were and they were full, they were what? Four clear. They were four clear of everybody. Right now I think they're three clear of Carolina, but this could get really interesting if the Bucks pull an upset because they still have to play Atlanta in Atlanta and I believe they still play Carolina in Carolina. I think they play Carolina twice. So this could get interesting in the South. It may not be a foregone conclusion if my Buccaneers pull the upset. We will see, boys. We will certainly see. Now, let's talk about a, a couple of interesting games. We'll we'll talk one that's more interesting, depending upon injuries, and and then we'll talk a, a big one regarding MVP to close out with. But uh, but first, let's talk Jags plus three at the Colts. This mm. seems like it would be something you might talk about on Three Dog Thursday. I believe it will be a topic. Now, I got burned badly. I, I was toasted by the Jaguars in London when last we saw them two weekends ago because I liked them against the Texans, and they absolutely no-showed. I don't know if they were still in the pub. I don't know if they were taking in the tour, going to see the Queen at Buckingham Palace, but they no-showed in, in London. And so now they've had a week off, and they get Nick Foles back. And the, and the midweek, we don't know the answer. The midweek question mark is, can Jacoby present play in this game can present play because he couldn't play against the Dolphins and the Colts go out and lose to the Dolphins at home with Brian Hoyer at quarterback so again they are three-point favorites with Brissett listed as questionable for this game and I know Foles hasn't played since week one with the with the fractured uh, left clavicle the collarbone but uh, Jacksonville may be a team to take a look at here with their defense, with Leonard Fournette running the ball, and with Foles back on the road with no Brissett, are you feeling me at all, winning cures, guys? On this as a maybe for Three Dog Thursday purposes? Yeah, without Jacoby, absolutely, I completely agree. Yeah, this this Colts team is completely di- like it, the team itself is a good team. Yeah, but Brian Hoyer is just an anchor yeah. around the neck. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. True, and they could not <laughs> run the ball even against the Dolphins' defense. They could not run the ball last week. No, you just uh, put and, and so we'll see. Down Mac, and and you're good. Yep. Nobody else can do anything. When T. Y. Hilton is is still. That's getting, right. That's right. No, yeah, he he he's not he's not 100. percent So. Yeah, I mean that's we we got problems there. So I, yeah, I could absolutely see the Jags covering three there. Uh, but of course, you'll talk about it on Three Dog Thursday. Let's uh let's close out with this one. Chris thinks this is the battle for the MVP. Now, not including Russell Wilson, but I was gonna say it, yeah. No, the Seahawks are off this week, Giannini, <laughs> so we can't have a battle for the MVP if Russell Wilson's not playing. But you 
You like uh, you like what? Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson as the MVP be- battle here going head to head this week? Absolutely, I think it's going to be an incredible game. Lamar already went up to Seattle, went head to head with Russell yep. Wilson, took down that giant, and uh, outplayed him in that game. And now we get to see can he hang with uh, Watson? Is Watson going to step up here? I, I think this is going to be an incredible football game. And Houston off that bye week after they drummed Jacksonville like we were talking about in London. And uh, also Lamar Jackson with a win over the Patriots. Started the game 10 for 10 last week. Does that count if it's against the Bengals? Does it still count officially in the record count. book? He, he's got okay. two perfect games. Both of them are against the Bengals and the Dolphins. <laughs> But he still has them in the records, and nobody else has them against those teams. So. Yeah, well, that's right. And so I'm with you that on on paper here, this looks like a tremendous matchup early on. Uh, you almost would have liked this one to have maybe been flexed into Sunday night instead of the Bears and their hapless offense against the Rams as the Sunday night game where we could all see it. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be that's gonna be a fascinating game. And, again, uh, you know, the Houston Texans are leading right now in the AFC South. Uh, and Deshaun Watson deserves a lot of credit for the way that he has played because these are two quarterbacks, again, that were kind of doubted. And we've talked about this on your show, uh, that, that there were questions about taking uh, Watson when he was drafted. There were definitely questions about the Ravens tra- uh, trading back into the first round to take Lamar Jackson back uh, a year ago in the draft. Uh, they aren't asking questions about that anymore, boys. No, sir. The, all those questions have been answered, and now we're trying to figure out which one of these guys are the best quarterback in the NFL right now. I like it. Should be a lot of fun in that one. And, again, uh, the Ravens uh, in this instance are the four-point favorite. Would I dare take the Texans? Will any of my guests take the Texans on Three Dog Thursday? They've got to tune in and find out, guys. <laughs> you got that right. You can find the Three Dog Thursday podcast on any of your favorite podcast apps, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, etc., and, of course, you can find TJ over on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we love you. Thank you for coming in every single week. It is, uh, it is always a, uh, what's a, what's a good word, enjoyable experience. <laughs> well, I, I, it was definitely enjoyable last week to have you on the program. Gary uh, did a nice job with Three Dog Thursday coming up with a college win. You had an, you had an NFL push. Uh, Brother Giannini, you got stuff to live up to now. Come swinging, come swinging on Three Dog Thursday now with some good underdog picks because we're rolling along here in November. You boys be well. Absolutely. You too, buddy. So, of course, you can always find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Just go up and click on the gambling picks section and make sure you enter the picks contest. Make sure and also go over to tunicatravel.com. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button, share the show out, tell your friends about it, leave some comments, tell us what your picks are for the week. We would love to hear them. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.